Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. It's Tuesday. We give the same title to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts, and that title is this. We call it our Tract and Truth Tuesday. Tract and Truth. The word tract is T-R-A-C-T. It's a reference to a gospel tract. I hope that if you do not know what one of those really is, that you'll listen. I'll explain it in a moment, and I also hope that you'll get some gospel tracts from us. They are free of charge. We'd love to send them to you. We'll say more about that in a moment. I'm going to talk about one. Well, we also use the word truth in our title, and the truth we reveal is the truth of the gospel. Well, today we're talking about something we began yesterday, and it's dealing with opportunities. Position. If you can right now, get your Bible open to the book of Proverbs chapter 15. We were there yesterday. Return there. Get something on which you can jot some notes. As I said yesterday, I began dealing with Proverbs 15, a brief look at some principles that are found there to help us deal with opposition. Well, since it's Tract and Truth Tuesday, guess what one of those places is where you and I can find opposition. It's when we're sharing the gospel. When we tell somebody the gospel, we're, we're telling them the gospel of God, not the gospel according to you and me. So we don't get to alter the message. We don't get to alter the message of what we're telling them. What we can alter, though, is the way or the demeanor by which we interact with the lost soul, with the gospel. Telling a sinner they're guilty of sin and headed for hell is not what most people want to hear, amen? While telling the person that there is not multiple ways to get to heaven, but there's only one way, that often will receive opposition. It'll be pushback from that. So how do we handle opposition when telling the gospel? That's where we're headed today, picking up in our principles from the book of Proverbs chapter 15. Get your Bible open. If possible, get something to jot some notes with. I have a gospel tract in front of me. This one, this one has produced some opposition. Remember I said a moment ago when we tell people there's only one way to get to heaven, that can create some opposition. This tract is entitled Infant Baptism? Question mark. What does the Bible say? On the front face of a gospel tract, this one here is a beautiful, smiling baby. Uh, the baby's probably about six months old, just a gorgeous this baby. And so many people get their babies baptized thinking that makes them fit for heaven. Friend, it does not. To go to heaven, to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. And that does not happen through the waters of baptism. It happens through the new birth, the individual personally receiving Christ. A child cannot understand the gospel. They must understand the gospel to receive the gospel. I cannot tell you how many times in talking with people about sharing Christ and how to be saved, I get a response by when I ask the question, if you were to die today, how do you know you go to heaven? They say, well, I was baptized as a baby. When I tell them that that is not the right answer, I get some pushback and some opposition. I try to be very gentle and explain to them that the gospel of Jesus Christ does not include baptism. Now, some very good godly people disagree with me, but would you get this track from us? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation found in the word of God. At the end of the program, my announcer is going to give you three ways by which you can contact us, giving us your name and your mailing address. Please do that. Do it today. I'll send you a free sample packet that contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts, including this one, Infant Baptism, What Does the Bible Say? Please get these gospel tools from us today. 
If your Bible's open, let me begin reading Proverbs 15. I'm going to read, first of all, verse 13, then jump to verse 16. Verse 13 says, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. Verse 16 says, Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger a Jesus strife. For time's sake, let me just stop right there. Yesterday, I began sharing 15 principles that I find here in Proverbs 15 for handling opposition. In my own personal lifetime, I've experienced opposition in my home when I was a teenager. In the early days of my married life, I was learning about how to be a married man. I wasn't very good at it at first. That created strife and opposition. I've dealt with opposition in some of my jobs during high school and college, and I've dealt with opposition with fellow Christians in ministry. When I was a pastor, I found opposition from deacons and other saints. Nobody is exempt from opposition. You know it, I know it. But if you share the gospel very often at all, you have found opposition from some of those people that you've telling them the love of Christ. You see, God's word says that lost people are enemies of God and that they are angry at the ways of God. In sharing Christ, you and I find people to be at various levels of their animosity towards God, depending on how God's been dealing with their conscience. Well, how do we handle opposition when it comes up in times of evangelism? I gave five principles yesterday. I'm going to give some more. I will not handle all 15 here. You can read the Word of God and find them for yourself. But let me continue. Principle number six, based upon verse 13, is this. Keep a cheerful disposition. Keep a cheerful disposition. Beloved, you and I dare not let somebody else's attitude and demeanor affect ours. The love and joy of Christ has to be something that permeates our lives. Can I just share with you that more often than not, there is somebody else watching the gospel conversation you are having with the person that is in opposition to you. That watching person sees the anger and bitterness in the heart of the other person, but they see your joy. I cannot tell you how often I've seen people come to Christ as Savior as the gospel reached them being, well, frankly, defected or deflected off of the other person's stubborn heart. This watcher got saved. Here's principle number seven. And this is really key based upon verse 16. Fear God, not men. Fear God and not men. Isn't that easier said than done? It sure is. Friend, it's easy for us to back down from telling the gospel when the lost person is at least initially hostile towards it. But friend, let's let you and I stand before God someday with joy in our heart because rather than being fearful of the lost person, we were faithful to God. Here's principle number eight. It's based upon verse 17. Verse 17 says, Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Principle number eight is this. Love people. Love people. Trust me. People know real quickly whether you love them, whether they matter to you or not. They will sense that you value them. And by the way, When there is a struggle between you and even another believer or another family member, please value the person more than winning the argument. We need to love people and value them. Now, sometimes the issue is such that we have to make sure that it's clear and we have to say, here's the right way, even when the other person that we love doesn't see it. But we got to love people. Principle number nine, I won't deal with it. Let me just give it to you. Principle number nine, based upon verse 18, is this. Don't become hostile. Don't become hostile. Principle number 10, based upon verse 22, is this. Use godly counselors. I would really like to stop and camp here, but I don't have time. Use godly counselors. I do want to talk about principle number 11, though. It's based upon verse 23. Verse 23 says this, A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. Here's the principle. 
Choose your words with care. Choose your words with care. I have met believers, and so have you, particularly believers that were men who really do love Jesus and they love the gospel, but they are more apt to offend somebody uh, when giving the gospel than they are to really get through the full gospel presentation. In talking with some of these guys, I've heard them say stuff like this, and I'm quoting almost verbatim now. They said, well, I know I can come across as gruff, but that's just who I am, end quote. Well, friend, that's the problem. That is who they are, but it's not who Jesus is. In Christ, we grow into the likeness of Jesus. If we are not growing in Christ's likeness, then we are an immature Christian and, put it very bluntly, we're carnal. We're carnal. We're living after the flesh. If you don't want to change your gruffness, then friend, you got a, you got a problem with Christ. you got a problem with your salvation life that's in you if you know Christ. We know little if we are acting in a non-Christ-like demeanor. We know little then of the power of God working in us and working through us. Oh, friend, trust me, trust me. There are plenty of folk out there who basically, well, put it bluntly, they hate the gospel. But that being said, please also trust me when I tell you that there are folk out there in whose hearts God has already been busy preparing the soil for the gospel seed. They are there. If you've listened to me preach very much, you probably have heard me say that I wish God had put a, a light bulb in the middle of everybody's forehead. And when the light bulb was red and glowing red, it would tell you the person is not ready for the gospel. If the light bulb would glow orange, we would say, well, there, God's getting him ready. God's getting him ready. But if the light in the forehead was glowing green, we would know, hey, they're ready for the gospel. Give it to them, ready to receive the gospel. Wouldn't that be great? Well, the problem is God didn't give us any lights in our forehead, so we've got to give the gospel to everybody. Some of them are going to be antagonistic to the gospel, but some are going to be open and ready because God has gone before us. It's amazing how that leading one soul to Christ will cause you and I to forget all the bad experiences. They're going to fade away. Perhaps you're listening today. You've heard me talk about the gospel. The word means good news. Here's the good news. Yes, you are a sinner. Yes, you're condemned before God. Yes, you are headed for hell. But God has made a way of escape for you. It's a way of love. He sent his only begotten son. His name is Jesus. He's the Christ, the eternal son of God who came and died on the cross in your place, shed his blood to pay your sin debt. The sinless one paid the sin debt for sinners like you and me. And if you will, by faith, receive him as your savior, turn from your sin, receive him by faith, he will abundantly pardon, give you everlasting life. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.